lesson 1-4, Writing Equations and Inequalities, you are on page 21. We're going to get some vocabulary out of the way that we need to know first. The word equation, it's a mathematical sentence formed by placing the symbol equals between two expressions. So a couple key things there, equals, I think you know what that means. Remember, expressions, we learned in lesson one, expressions could have a number, it could have a variable, it could have operations in it. So a, a simple equation, which would meet this criteria, might be like 8 plus n equals 13. I have two expressions, one on the left, one on the right. It's, com it's uh, formed with an equal sign. That's an equation. An inequality, if you look at the wording, it's the exact same thing, except instead of using an equal sign, we're going to use an inequality symbol. Think about it. Inequality means not equal. Okay? It's the same idea, except instead of an equal sign, maybe we have an inequality symbol in there, like 8 plus n less than 13. We have to know the different inequality symbols, okay? Which gets me to, before I guess I talk about those inequality symbols, one other thing, an open sentence. An open sentence is an equation or an inequality that contains an algebraic expression. Now remember, the word algebraic meant, and this is from lesson one again, you must have a variable in your expression, in your inequality or equation to make it algebraic. So what I wrote up here, 8 plus n less than 13, that would definitely be an algebraic open sentence. Okay. Open sentences must have a variable in it. We need to know these inequality symbols. Sometimes I have people struggle with those. Um, I was always taught, treat this like an alligator mouth. The al alligator will always eat the bigger amount. So this first symbol is a less than symbol, and the reason it's called that is, let me put some numbers in here. Now remember, the alligator eats the bigger amount, so let's put, you know, one here and three here. Obviously, the alligator is going to eat the three. It's bigger. Well, the one is less than three. That's why this is called a less than symbol. If you write it out in this order, the smaller amount's on the left. Um, the word fewer than can mean is less than. So fewer than is another way of saying that. If you put a little bar underneath, this symbol means is less than or equal to. Sometimes people get confused on that. Or means if any one of those things are true, it's a true statement. So if I put 2 here and 5 here, this is true. 2 is less than or equal to 5. It's one of those two. It's equal, actually. As long as it's one of the two, it's a true statement. At most and no more than are other words that mean is less than or equal to. Is greater than. Now you see how the alligator is eating less. So the, the bigger number would have to be here. The smaller number would have to be here. 10 is greater than 4. The word more than will indicate is greater than. And then if I put the bar underneath it, that would be an is greater than or equal to symbol. Okay, again, this would be true. Is 10 greater than or equal to 4? Is it one of those two things? Remember, or, or means one out of, it could be either one, okay? It'd be like, let's say at home and your mom says, you must clean your room or do the dishes before you go to the game tonight. The word or is important. It means you don't have to do both. You could clean your room or you could do the dishes. It's the same thing here is greater than or equal to, as long as one of those two conditions are met, it's a true statement. At least and no less than, those are other words that would mean to use is greater than or equal to. Let's keep going. Combining inequalities. Sometimes two inequalities are combined together. For example, the inequalities x is greater than 4 and x is less than 9, so think about that for a minute. 
X has got to be something bigger than 4 and something less than that at the same time. Well, numbers like 5, 6, 7, and 8 would do that, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, all those numbers are greater than 4 and less than 9. We could combine these two statements into one inequality by putting 4 less than x less than 9. I spoke it that way. The book says you should speak it x is greater than 4 and less than 9, but there's nothing wrong with saying 4 is less than x, which is less than 9, which is less than 9. Okay? So either way, either one of those ways to speak it would be fine. Okay, now one note I, we need to make, when you combine inequalities, the symbols must point in the same direction. Okay, 4 less than x less than 9, like they have in the book, that's correct. But if I rewrote it in the opposite direction, 9 greater than x greater than 4, that's fine too. Here's what you can't do. I'm writing it in red because this would be wrong. If you put like 9 greater than 4 less than x, that doesn't make any sense, okay? Because this says x is actually greater. You see how the alligator's eating x? This means that the alligator's picking x over either of these two. Well, that's not true. 9's bigger than x. So this wouldn't be a correct way of writing that. You've got to have the inequality symbols pointed in the same direction. Let's do some practice of writing equations or inequalities, changing the words into algebraic open sentences. So this first one, the difference of twice a number k and 8 is 12. So let's make sure we're careful here. Difference means subtraction. There's a subtraction in this problem, so let me write that. There's a subtraction. I've got to turn my layer on. Twice a number k and 8. So I'm subtracting these two things. Let me circle them. I'm subtracting twice k, which means take k times 2 and 8. Well, let me write that out. Here's twice k and here's 8. If I subtract those two, I should be getting 12. Is 12 means equals 12. Let's do the next one. The product of 6 and a number n is at least 24. So I'm multiplying 6 and n. So let me write that down. I'm multiplying 6 and n. And I want that to be at least. I want it to be greater than or equal to 24, which shows you how they're getting that. Okay, let's do another one. Let's go to the third one. A number y is no less than 5, so that means it's bigger than 5, and no more than 13, which means it's smaller than 13. So I have y in the middle. y needs to be bigger than 5 or equal. So the alligator is eating y when we're, check, when we're comparing it to 5, but when we compare it to 13, it it can be no more than 13, okay? Let's try this guided practice here on the bottom. Write an equation or an inequality. The quotient, the division of a number p and 12. Well, let's write that out. I'm taking p and 12 and dividing it. I got the division of p and 12 is at least 30, is at least. It's got to be greater than or equal to 30. That's what that would look like. Let's talk about a solution. When you have an open sentence, when you substitute a number in your open sentence, the resulting statement is either true or false. Let me give you a quick example of something super easy. A plus 3 equals 5. If I put a number in here for x, it's going to give me a true statement or a false statement. If I plug in 1, I'm going to get a false statement because 1 plus 3 isn't 5. But if I put in a 2, I get a true statement. 
if the statement is true, the number is considered to be a solution. It's called a solution. If, if the number you plug in gives the, a true statement, it's a solution. Okay? So, in the homework, they're going to ask you to check, is a given number a solution? That's simply asking, if you take that number and plug it in, does it make the statement true? Here are some samples. Let's look at these together. Okay? Let's check and see if 3 is a solution. Well, if I take 3 and I plug it in here for x, I would have 2 times 3 is 6. 8 minus 6 does equal 2. So 3 is a solution because when I plug in 3, I actually get it to work out right to 2. Let's check here. If I plug in 3, do I get, can you see here, do I get it equal to 6? Let's try. Let's plug in a 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Is 12 minus 5, 6? Mm, no, 12 minus 5 is 7. So 3 would not be a solution here. Let's check and see if 3 is a solution to 2z plus 5 is greater than 12. Let's plug in a 3. Remember, i got to do the multiplying first before the adding. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 5. Is 6 plus 5 greater than 12? Mm, 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 is not bigger than 12. So, nope, 3 is not a solution there. And then this last one, is 5 plus 3n less than or equal 20? Is 3 a solution? Well, Let's plug in 3. I got to multiply before I add, so 3 and 3 is 9. I got 5 plus 9 less than or equal 20. Let me see. 5 plus 9 is 14. Is 14 less than or equal to 20? Uh, yeah, it is. It is less than. So 3 is a solution. So when they ask you in the homework, and if you want to peek ahead real quick to page number 24, and you look at numbers 17 to 28, that's exactly what they're asking you to do. They're asking you to take the number and check if it's a solution to the inequality or the equation. Let's try a few. Check whether the given number is a solution of the inequality or equation. Well, if I plug 5 in here, is this true? Is 9 minus 5, 4? Uh, yes, it is. So, yes, 5 is a solution. Let's plug a 7 in here. For B, is 7 plus 5 less than 15? Um, yep, 7 and 5 is 12. 12 is less than 15. So, yes, 7 is a solution. Um, let's try here. Let's put in 9. 2 times 9 plus 3. Let me see. That's 18 plus 3. Is that greater than or equal to 21? Well, 18 and 3 adds up to 21. 21 equals 21, so yes, 9 would actually be a solution there. It does equal 21. We'll have a few of these in the homework, too. Solve, a mental, solve an equation using mental math. Well, what, what number can I plug in here to make, to get, to have, make the statement true? I'm pretty sure you're probably coming up with 5. So the solution here would be 5. If I plug in 5, I get a true statement. Or 5 times what's 40? Well, if I plug in 8, I would get a true statement. 8's a solution. Okay? Solving multi-step problems. We'll have a few of these in the homework. This will involve reading a word statement, setting up a model, setting up a verbal model, and then solving. So here it says, the last time you and three friends went to a mountain bike park, you had a coupon for $10 off and paid $17 for four tickets. What's the regular price? So the regular price is what we don't know. Okay, so let's write a model. The regular price, I'll put reg price, minus the $10 coupon, if you took the regular price and you subtracted your $10 off, last time you went, you paid $17. So here's my unknown. We normally have an unknown represented by a variable. So I tell you what, I like using uh, n for my variable typically, n or x. So 
N is my unknown regular price. If I take $10 off that regular price, we ended up paying 17. Well, let's solve this. Uh, I'd have to add 10 to get to the normal price. So N would equal 27. So the four of us paid $27 for our tickets, normal price. So what was the price of each ticket? Well, I'd have to take 27 and divide it by four, and that's $6.75. That's something you could check on your calculator. That would probably be a calculator problem there. $6.75 would be the price of each ticket, okay? Or here would be another example of that down here. Let's write and check a solution for this inequality. So we're going to write a verbal model and then we'll get our solution. A basketball player scored 351 points last year. So let's keep that in mind. If the player plays 18 games this year, will an average of 20 points per game be enough to beat last year's total? So we're pay playing 18 games this year. We need to score so many points per game, and I would want that to be more than 351 points. So the 18 games times the points per game should be more than 351. Now the question is, would 20 be enough? Well, let's try it. Let's take 20, and let's plug it in to our inequality. So 18 times 20 would need to be more than 351. Let's see if that's enough. If I'm doing my mental math right, 18 times 20, that should be 360. Well, that would be more points. So 20 would be a solution to the open sentence. 20 would be enough points per game to score. Okay? Before I finish the video, let's just do a couple book work questions just to make sure we got this down. When you put these in your notes, that means you do not have to put them in your homework. Okay? So, um, let's try number four on page 24. The difference, what does difference mean? Mm, it's subtraction. So, the subtraction of Z and 11 is equal to 35. Okay? So, there's number four. That would be a, a, a sample. Let's do a number one, another one. Let's go to six. The sum, hmm, sum means add. I'm adding 12 and a quantity. And a quantity means I got to do this first. I got a quantity eight times the number K and is equal to 48. So I guess I didn't need the parentheses. When it said quantity, that told me I might need to do that first, but if I just write this, that's the same thing. So 12 plus 8K would equal 48, okay? Uh, let's do one more. What about, uh, let's go to 9. It says the sum, which is adding, the sum of B and 3 is greater than 8 and less than 12. This is one of those uh, compound inequalities where I have, I've combined inequalities. I want B plus 3 to be greater than 8 and less than 12. So remember, your symbols must point in the same direction. So the alligator would eat B plus 3 when I compare it to 8, but when I compare it to 12, it ought to eat 12. So there would be three samples of that. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have questions, just ask.